1400 years ago, the Prophet peace be upon him said, the Dajjal from the time of Adam, Adam alayhi salam, till the end of time, this entire world, he said, there is no bigger trial, fitna, than the trial of Dajjal. All the way from Adam alayhi salam time to the end of time, everything that's happened in the world, Dajjal is the biggest trial that's going to come to the people. Now, before the Dajjal can come, at the moment, the Dajjal is tied up somewhere. I'll tell you the story soon. He's tied up somewhere. He's not allowed to come out yet. Do you know why? The ulama said, do you know why he's tied up for now? He's been tied up Allahu Alam how long? Because a road, a path is being prepared for him to come so that he can be accepted immediately. All right, I'm going to tell you how he's going to be accepted and why. It'll make sense, inshallah. The Dajjal is the one-eyed, the liar, the deceiver. For him to deceive the people so good and to be the biggest trial, the people would have already been gotten used to deception already. We have to live in a time of what we can call in Arabic Dajjal, a time of deception, so that the real deceiver can come. It's all set up for him. Do you understand? I see Muslims themselves now today moving away from the real deen and making up their own beliefs. We see them all the time. Some of them, they say, you know, I think prayer is what you think prayer should be. There are now some Muslims, they call themselves Muslims. I don't call them Muslims. They say, we only believe in what the Quran says, but we don't believe anything the Prophet peace be upon him said. They're called the Quraniyun, the Quranites. You know what they do? They bring you the verse about Salat. And they say, well, the Quran doesn't say exactly how to pray. So we get to make up the way we want to pray. Do you understand? Because with the Quran, if you just follow just the verses, because the verses, they're just like headings. And the Prophet Muhammad explains them. So now if you just take the Quran, you can get any verse and you can make up anything you want out of it. There are Muslims now in Australia, in Sydney and Melbourne. There's also in America, I don't know about the UK, but there are Muslim so-called Imams who say that being homosexual is, is allowed in Islam. It's halal, it's, it's legal, and uh, they do gay marriages and everything, you know, in the name of Islam. All right, man, you want to be gay, go ahead and be that. But don't come and, and twist the Quran. The Quran says it's haram, it's forbidden. So does Christianity and Judaism, you know, it's known. But what I'm saying is, there is a time when even some people who dress like Imams will make you believe in a different religion than Islam and I will call it Islam. So it's deception. And the shaitan helps the Dajjal. Do you know, do you know that the shaitan, Iblis, Iblis, the head of the shayateen, right from the beginning when Adam alayhi salam was created, he said something so interesting. He goes, you know, the people who follow yani the children of Adam, those who are Muslim, those who follow your book, O oh Allah, I am going to go to their religion. I'm going to sit waiting for them at their religion and I'm going to make them believe a different religion. I will make them practice their religion the wrong way. One example is I'm going to make them show off. So when they come to pray, they're only doing it to please the people, right? I'm going to make Imams out of them who just want to bring people to them so they can show off and look like he's in charge of a big group. I want to make people who they want to just be part of a group like, like gangs in the name of Islam, but they're not really sincere. The shaitan's going to come up. I'm sorry I spoke about the Imam. Yani we, we're all Imams, inshallah. But I'm going to say, brothers and sisters, that the shaitan is going to deceive even some Imams. He'll deceive you, he'll deceive me. Why? In preparation for the Dajjal. Now, the reason I said Imam is because of this. Get ready. All the deception has to happen because when the Dajjal comes out, he doesn't call himself an Imam. You know what he calls himself? He calls himself Prophet Isa salam himself. He calls himself Prophet Isa. The Dajjal calls himself, I am Prophet Isa, but he's lying. Listen to what the Prophet salam said. He said, one night, going on Isra al Ma'raj. So he said, Jibreel salam took me to the Kaaba and I was praying at the Kaaba. This hadith is in Sahih Muslim for whoever wants to see it. And then after I finished, I looked to, I looked to my right or left and I see a young man, his hair, is nice and long. It comes up to his shoulders. It's neither too straight nor too wavy. And it looks like water is on it, but it doesn't really have water. So it's got really beautiful, silky, shiny hair. And his face, his features is dark, Adami, which means he's got a dark features. And he had two people with him that he was putting his hands on their shoulders. And I like the way he looked. So I asked Jibreel, who is that? And Jibreel said, that is your brother, Isa alayhi salam. Isa ibn Maryam the real Isa. He goes, then I looked to the other side and I saw another young man. And this young man, he was one of the biggest sizes that I've ever seen. He wasn't tall, but he was just big. And his hair was very coarse. 
very rough hair. And one of his eyes, the right eye, it was bulging like a grape. You know the black part? You know the, the iris? You know the inside? It's like a sultana. It, he can't see from it. It's gone. So he can't see from it. It's blind from, from the right eye. And the left eye, he also called it in another hadith, he says it's awar as well. Awar means it's deformed. So you're going to see hadith which Prophet said, his right eye is deformed. Sometimes you'll say his left eye is deformed. What it means is that the right eye, he cannot see from it. Mutfi'a, he doesn't see it. And the left eye also looks unusual. It's got like a piece of meat under it. And it doesn't look normal. I think it even has a different color, but he can see from it. So both his eyes are deformed. They don't look normal. But one, the right eye can't see from it. The left eye can see from it. That's why he's called al awad al-Dajjal. The one with the deformed eyes. It doesn't necessarily mean the one-eyed Dajjal. You know how sometimes they put on the movies a big, uh, what do you call it, Cyclops. You know the Cyclops with one big eye here? Yeah, you've seen them on, on, on Lord of the Rings. Big Cyclops. So it's just um, connecting with the young ones. So it's got a big eye. That's not what the Dajjal looks like. The Dajjal, he sees with one eye, which is the left, but both his eyes are deformed. Okay? So Prophet is describing him to us so well. Anyway, he says, and he had two people and he was, you know, leaning on their shoulder. And the Prophet Sallallahu said, Oh Jibreel, who is that? And he said, that is Al-Masih Al-Dajjal. In another hadith, he actually said something else. He said, Isa ibn Maryam is Al-Masih Al-Sadiq or Al-Siddiq, which means the Masih, which means the Messiah, but he is the truthful Messiah. And then he turned to the actual Dajjal and he said, that's the, he's also the Messiah. He said Messiah, but he is the lying Messiah. And Masih has several meanings. The ulama gave it 30 different meanings, maybe even 40 or 50. But one of the main meanings means for Dajjal, Mamsuh al ain comes from Masih, which means his eye is wiped off. He can't see from it. Other scholars that also said, which is also correct, said Masih meaning he will travel the entire world or spread out through the world. So when the Dajjal comes out, the world is ready for him. Now check this out. He said that he will come out from a place called Asbahan or Asfahan today we call it, Asbahan, which is now today in Iran. And he said that he will come out with 70 Jewish people following him. It doesn't mean that right now the Iranians are going to follow him or that the Jews of Iran. It could mean that the place where Jews used to live in that time, from that place, 70 people will follow him. Because another hadith, Prophet ﷺ said to us that the majority of the people of the world will follow him and believe him. And he said, among them are the Jews, number one. And I'll explain to you why the Jews. Number two, he said Al-Ajam. Al-Ajam means the foreigners. And usually it means the Romans. So most of the Christians will follow him. And then he said, and a mixture of people, a mixture of different people. Among them are the uneducated nomad people, desert people who don't have much education. And subhanAllah, I'm just quoting the hadith. He said, and also a lot of women will follow him. Which is quite interesting to tell us because in the social media today, social media world, isn't it a really fake world? Is it a fake world or not? So much filters, so many people who think that by getting so many likes that they're somehow important now. You know, you can show yourself, uh, excuse me for the expression, you can show yourself uh, licking the tongue of a dog and, and you'll have so many likes from it. You can, like the more stupid you do things, the more people give you likes and the more people copy you. And that's what's happening, right? Social media is a really fake lying world. It makes you think that you're important, but you're not based on a few likes and no one really cares. And that's Dajjal. That's all of it, right? Filtering yourself to make you look like you're something you're not. Unfortunately, this is just my opinion that we see a young people, a lot of people, everybody actually going on social media and we see a lot of our sisters who, you know, focus too much on their appearance and wanting that attention. I'm, as I said, I'm, I'm a teacher and they love that attention and the boys like to look and you know, they don't understand that a lot of these men, a lot of these boys want to use and abuse them, right? And all they want is a lot of them is, I just want attention. They don't think like the boys, right? And they get deceived. A lot of the young girl students, they ask me this. And when I speak to them, tell them, listen, this is what the men are thinking. You know, you don't have to show yourself because you think that they're really interested in you. They're just interested in your body or something else. So don't let them be like that. And if you want to do something, you know, if you want to test any, any guy, go up to him, if he's using you and say to him, you know, the way you want, what you want from me, would you want from your sister? I said that to one student and she said to me, oh my gosh, she came back crying and says, he's not really interested in me. He wouldn't want it for his sister. And I said to him, well, if he doesn't want that for his sister, then you're not valuable to him. You are trash. You're rubbish. The day when he treats you as valuable as his own sister, 
then it really means that he really is interested in you. By the way, they're only 15 years old. They just hatch out of the egg. That was a 15 year old going to do. I said, wait till they get married one day, inshallah. Marriage is halal. It's okay to like her, but you've got to keep things halal.